In this video, I want to take just a few minutes and discuss the difference between layers and channels inside of Photoshop. Now, if you're completely new to the world of Photoshop, the difference between these two can be a little confusing, and I've seen a lot of folks who are just getting started really have a hard time discerning between the two. So we're going to lay that all to rest right here. Now, let's make sure we're all on the same page in terms of the user interface. So if you take a look up in the application bar, make sure that you're looking at the Essentials workspace. Also, use the drop-down to reset the Essentials workspace so that we all see the exact same thing. Now I'm going to open up an image and it really doesn't matter which image you open. If you have uh, one of your own you can open that. I am going to grab the penguins image. Now this uh, is included along with Windows 7. It's in the sample images folder if you or sample pictures folder if you wanted to grab that. Now let's start off by taking a quick look at layers. I'm not going to go into every little nuance of playing with layers or a whole lot of the interface for the layers panel. That's something I'm going to handle in an in-depth video specifically over working with layers. For now, it's enough to know that all we have at the moment is just a background layer, which is really kind of, if you can think of it, like a sheet of paper on which this image has been printed. Now I can add a new layer to this layer stack by clicking on the new layer button. Now there's a whole lot of different ways to go about this, but uh, this is the way we're going to do it for now. At the very bottom of the layers panel, which is in the lower right hand corner of your screen, you'll see a new layer button. It's right next to the trash can and it looks like a sheet of paper with the lower left corner folded up. If you click on that, you get a brand new layer titled Layer 1. Now this layer you can think of like a sheet of transparent film or like acetate that's been laid down on top of your image and you can do whatever you like to it. You can paint things on it, you can add shapes to it, you can do anything, but it will not affect the original background layer. So if I grab my paintbrush and let's get something that's really going to stand out against this background, uh, maybe something like red, I can start painting all sorts of things. We can make our, our penguins really scary and give them uh, red eyes because that's just kind of freaky. And then we could maybe switch over to orange and this guy's breathing fire. Now I know this looks really cheesy, but understand it's just a, a fast example. Now this layer can be switched on and off. You'll see it has no effect whatsoever over the background. I can even move the layer around. It, again, it's just like a, an infinitely large sheet of transparency that I can move wherever I need it to go. I can also just remove it entirely. I can completely get rid of it if I want to. Now, another way to, to think about these, if I was to just take uh, my background, let's just do it this way. Let me go to File, New, and I'll do like a really, really quick diagram just to kind of explain this. You can think of layers like so. I'm going to hit the D key to go to black, hit the B key to grab my paintbrush, and then I'm going to shrink my brush down to about five pixels or so. So let's say that this is our document. And it could be, it could have anything on it. It doesn't really matter what it has on it. Now I'm going to create a brand new layer. So I'm going to click the new layer button just like I did before. And I'll grab some other color doesn't really matter which one. And I'm going to make another one of these boxes right on top of the first. And this kind of illustrates what a layer is. So we've got our original background image. and just, I guess just to really kind of drive this home because it's fun, um, I'll make this into a picture. So the first one is a sheet of paper with a smiley on it. And the layer above that is just a transparent sheet that you can lay down on top of the original. And then you can paint whatever you want on it. So for instance, I'm going to get my brush tool back out, so I'm going to hit B. I'm going to hold down the Alt key and click right there on that blue to steal that color so I can paint with it again. And now if I want, I can start decorating my little smiley here. We can give him pupils and maybe a nose and some cheek makeup. But really, that is just its own individual layer. And uh, the two are not joined in any way whatsoever. Now I can collapse a layer. I can take a layer and hit Control e there's a couple other ways to do that as well, but we'll just focus on the hotkey for now. I can hit Control e and now you'll notice that layer is gone, and all I have is the background layer. <clears throat> Excuse me. All I did was I took the pixel information that was on that layer, and I just dropped it down, so there's no more layer 1 anymore. I'm going to undo that by hitting Control z just so we retain the difference between our two layers. So hopefully that makes the the explanation of layers pretty basic. Let's take a look at channels now. Now to help channels make a little more sense, we need to stick with an image, something that's got a little bit more of a complex color scheme to it. 
in the same panel that contains layers, by default, we have our channels. And this is an RGB color mode image using red, green, and blue. Now, if you uh, paid attention to our first, uh, an earlier video where we talked about creating a new document, we uh, did mention the different color modes, but the idea is that RGB pictures are typically reserved for being viewed on a screen of some sort. So that's what you're going to be using for things like web graphics or something you're going to be putting into a video, etc. CMYK, on the other hand, is something you'd be using for print. Now, each one of the channels for RGB, being red, green, and blue, can be expressed individually by clicking each one of these channels. Now, it can be a little bit confusing the first time you see this, but what you're looking at is literally a map to how much red data is being used in this image. Currently, I have the red channel selected. All I did was just left click on that. And what we see is how much red exists in the image on a pixel by pixel basis. White pixels have full red value. Black pixels have no red whatsoever. Same with green. We have the amount of green information and the amount of blue. Now that can be a little bit hard to kind of wrap your head around if you're completely new to the idea. So what I like to do when I'm explaining this to, uh, to people who are kind of seeing this for the first time is go up into the preferences in Photoshop. So we go under edit, run down to preferences, we go to the interface and switch on show channels in color and click OK. Now it becomes a little easier to see what each one of these channels is doing. So there's all of our red pixels and our green pixels and our blue pixels. And we can start holding down the shift key to start combining them. So we start with red, hold down shift and click on green and there's the combination of our red and green channels. We can grab green and hold down shift and grab blue and there's the combination of green and blue. We can grab blue and hold down shift and click on red and there's blue and red combined. If we hold down shift and click on green, we add them all together and you'll notice that RGB automatically gets selected at the top. So if you're selecting any one of these, at any point you can click on RGB at the top and that just grabs all of your channels. Again, it's just a way to show you how much color information is being displayed on a pixel by pixel basis. Where layers actually allow you different sheets that you can apply different parts of the work to, channels on the other hand are going to influence the entire image and it's going to show you how much color information you have for each channel. Now I'm, earlier I did mention two different color modes. I mentioned RGB and CMYK. Just for the fun of it, let's jump back over to our penguins. I'm going to go over to image, jump down one option to mode, and this allows me to change the color mode of this image. I'm going to switch this over to CMYK, which is generally what you'd be using for print. We'll get a little warning about switching color profiles, and we'll just go ahead and click OK. That's not really a problem. But now notice if I jump over to the channels panel, we now have channels for cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And if you're familiar at all with the four color printing process, this looks exactly like what you'd be seeing on your plates. So we have our cyan plate, our magenta plate, our yellow plate, and our black plate. And we can add them all together. So we can start with cyan, hold down shift, add in magenta, add in yellow, and then finally add in our blacks. So hopefully that makes the difference between layers and channels make a lot more sense. The easy way to think of it is that layers allow you to separate your work into various stacked sheets, and we'll talk more about working with layers in an upcoming video. Channels, on the other hand, give you a visual breakdown of how much color information is applied to each individual channel of your image. And those channels are going to vary depending on what color mode you're in, where RGB just has red, green, and blue. CMYK has cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. If we were to switch to another mode, just as an example, we could go uh, back over to our penguins, and we can go over to image mode and switch those over, just as an example, to grayscale. And we'll get a little warning. says, uh, do you want to discard your color information? And now if we jump to channels, the only channel we have is gray, because this is just going to be a single channel, which is going to, each pixel is going to range from black all the way up to white, and all the shades of gray in between. So hopefully that makes the difference between channels and, and layers completely apparent, and that is going to wrap things up for this video. Thanks a lot for watching.